So, you know, if you have a sequence of numbers, so that's this collection of a first one, a second one, a third one, and so forth, one thing that math folks like to do every once in a while is to add them all up. If you add up a whole collection of numbers, a, a sequence of numbers, what you produce is what's called a series. So a series is nothing more than adding up a sequence. Let me write that down for you just sort of in you know, what we would have here, plain English. So I'd have the first term of my sequence, and then I'd add it to the second term, and I'd add it to the third term. Now, what a lot of times people do is they put like dot, 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 meaning and so forth, and then they put the last term, call it a sub l. So there's the very last one. Maybe this is like up to the 10, so this would be a sub 10 or something. I don't know. Anyway, that's what I mean by a series. It's just the sum, the sum of some of the terms in a sequence. Now, there's a very shorthand way of writing that. You see, that's sort of long. Look how long that is. That's, look at that. That is almost eight inches to write that down. Can you imagine if you had a textbook where they wrote them out, that it would be like the textbook would be this big. You'd carry it around, your and backpacks would have to be bigger, and the whole, I mean, the whole economy would actually be on its side if we would write it like that. So instead, there's a very shorthand way of writing this, a very tight, concise way that could fit in your backpack and so forth. You could take it with you. And I want to introduce that language to you right now. So this is not a new idea. It's just a notation for writing this eight-inch thing. And what I do is I use the capital Greek letter sigma, which the S stands for sum, basically, to represent the fact that I'm adding terms up. So what I write is the following. I write sigma, or sometimes we read this as summation, of these terms, A sub n. And now, what I want to do is I want to make it very clear where that index is going from, starting from where and going to where. Now, looking at this example, you see it starts from 1. Then it goes up to 2, 3, 4, all the way up to the last one, which I'm calling L. And the way I denote that is I write here on the bottom n equals 1, which means we're going to start for n equals 1, and we're going to sum up a 1 and then increase this to a 2, a 3, and so forth, all the way up to the last one, which I write up here as an L. So if you actually think about computers, know about computers and some programming, this is sort of like a loop. It's sort of like a loop where this is the index. And I keep incrementing the index up by 1. And I keep doing that, add all those terms together until I get up to L. So in fact, this symbolic, symbolically means exactly this. Let me read this to you, first of all. So you see this in a children's story. You know how to read it. I would say summation n going from 1 to L of a sub n. And what that means is I let n equal 1, and I take a sub 1. And then I add it to n equals 2. And then I have a sub 2. And I keep upping the index, a sub 3, and adding them all up. This sum, this sigma means sum, all the way until I get n equals l. And then I stop. And then I stop. So let's do some examples so you can see the series in action, especially the notation. The notation is all that's new here. And it's a little bit weird. So summation n equals 1 to 4 of 4n minus 3. Now let's figure out what that means. What that means is I start my counter at n equals 1, and I plug in 1 for n, see what that equals, and then I sum it, I add that to when n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, and then I stop. So what I would see here is 4 times 1 minus 3. Ooh, it's a minus 3. Wait, wait, it's a minus 3. It's a minus 3. I was about to do a plus 3, but don't do that. Don't do that. So let's wide it out there. Boop, 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 boop. Perfect. So that's what happens the very, very first term when n equals 1. Now what do I do? I add what I get when I up the index to n equals 2, always keeping my eye on the fact that I'm only going up to 4. So if n equals 2, I plug in 2 for n. So I see 4 times 2 minus 3. That's the next term. Then I up the index again to n equals 3, and I have 4 times 3 minus 3. And then I up the index again to n equals 4, and I put plus. So I'm adding 4 times 5, a, f a 4 minus 3. And now I let n equal 5 and go, whoop, wait, stop. I'm only going up to 4. So that stops the process. So this long thing actually is represented by this. You see that? Look at the, look at the savings I have here, right? This is so long, 16 inches, compared to a mere 4 and a half. So you can see it's a substantial savings, but they mean the exact same thing. And so what does this equal? Well, you could figure this out, I guess. This is 4 minus 3, which is 1, plus this is 8 minus 3, which is 5, plus this is 12 minus 3, which is 9, 
plus, and this is 16 minus 3, which is 13. And then you can just add them all together because we're adding these things up. So what do we get? Well, so you can add them up in order or cheat like I do. This is 10. 10 and 18 is 28. So this complicated looking thing here can be expanded as a sum that looks like this, and that sum actually just can be calculated to be a mere 28. So this is a very, very impressive way of saying 28. So I'm adding up these terms, and I get 28. Let's try this one. Summation, n going from 3 to 6 of 2n. Well, what do I do here? Well, the same thing. I start with n equals 3, and I plug it in. So I see 2 times 3, and then I add and I up the, up the index to n equals 4, and I have 2 times 4. Then I add 2 times 5. Then I add 2 times 6, but then I stop since I've hit my upper bound, and now I just have to add up all those even numbers. That's going to be 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12. And what does that equal? Well, that's going to be 20, uh, 36. You see? So this notation is a way of allowing me to condense the idea of adding up a whole bunch of terms from a particular sequence, from a particular sequence. One last thing, how about if we go the other way? What if I give it to you in expanded terms? Could we write this in a condensed manner? How about 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16? Can I see that as being part of a general sequence? Well, let's write this as... 2 to the first plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed plus 2 to the fourth. See, if I write it that way, then I can see there's a general sequence, 2 to the n, and I'm letting the n going from 1 to 4. So I could write this now as big finish. In fact, it's so big, let me give it its own space in history. I could write this as summation n going from 1 to 4 of 2 to the n. And you can check that if we were to actually write this out, we'd see 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 2 plus 2 to the 3 plus 2 to the 4. So that's a very concise way of writing this, this long sum here, this long sum. So that's the summation notation. It's a very condensed, compactified way, way of writing sums. And, and the actual Greek letter, by the way, let me just close with this. Like I said it's capital sigma. It looks like this officially. But sometimes people just abbreviate and write it this way. Don't put the little, you know, sin serif, actually, you can say it now. But so that's, that's sort of a, a, a fast way. If you want to be very elegant for formal occasions, I'd put the serif on. It makes it look very, very pretty. Anyway, enjoy your Greek, and I'll see you up at the next lecture.